Roberts here, and this is Easy Access Math. And today, we are going to factor a trinomial. Now, let's take a look at this trinomial first. It's a basic trinomial. It has a letter with a square, a plain letter with a number in front of it, and a plain number that doesn't have a letter. It has three segments. So that makes it a trinomial. Three segments separated by signs. Now, the rule is this. I need to find two numbers that add up to this middle number, the number with the x in this case, and multiply to that last number, the plain old number at the end. So I'm going to look for multiples of that number, that's 6. First, I'm going to set up a FOIL-like setup with two sets of parentheses. And uh, it's good to brush up on FOIL. You could watch uh, a video we have on that and the many videos on FOIL on YouTube. Uh, but that will help be a check in this method as well. Now, I need two numbers that add up to 5 and multiply to 6. So I'm going to start by thinking of the multiples of 6. Well, I have 6 and 1, and I have 3 and 2. Those are the multiples of 6. Now, I need the pair that multiplies to a positive 6. Always pay attention to the signs and uh, may want to review some sign number rules. Uh, watch a video on the rules of sign numbers. Uh, but remember, to get a positive 6, the signs would have to be the same. And the number adds up to a positive 5. So I pretty much know now that these two numbers are both positive. That's the only way they can add up to a positive and yet multiply to a positive as well. So the 6 and 1 would be excluded because 6 and 1, if they were both positive, would not add up to 5. If they were unlike signs, 6 and 1 would subtract to 5, but then that would be a negative there, and it's a positive. So 3 and 2 are my factors. It would be plus 3 and plus 2. And so my factors are x plus 3 and x plus 2. And to check, I could FOIL. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is plus 2x. Plus 3 and x is plus 3x. And last, 3 times 2 is plus 6. FOIL, very important skill. So um, you may want to watch the video on FOIL again just to brush up, because you'll be using FOIL on many algebra problems, at least as a check. Now, I combine the middle like terms. There's my 5x. And there I have it, x squared plus 5x plus 6, which was my original problem. So it works. So my factors are x plus 3 and x plus 2. Those are the two factors. You may be faced with a question where you're not asked to factor, but you're asked to identify a factor, perhaps picking it out as a multiple choice question. And so either one of these would be correct as factors. You would never see both of them as answers to a multiple choice question uh, because they are both factors. So if they only want one factor, this is correct and this is correct. They both can be factors of this trinomial. Now, I want to show you a trinomial that's a little trickier. Take a look at this one. 2x squared plus 13x minus 24. And right away, you can see what's tricky about it is there's a 2 before the x squared. You may be faced with problems with 2s, with 3s, with 5s, 7s. There'll be a number before the x squared. And that changes up things a little bit in how you approach the problem. 
you still follow the basic rule of adding up to the middle number, combining, adding or subtracting to the middle number, and multiplying to the last number, but this 2 over here, and it could be a 3 or a 5, changes things a little bit. You first have to do this setup. You have to multiply that 2 by the last number. And you're going to get a number that will be the number we're going to look as the number at which the two factors would multiply to. Here, 2 times 24 is 48. And that is the number that we are going to try to get two numbers to multiply to. Those two numbers still have to combine, add or subtract, to positive 13. But we're going to go for 48 instead of the 24 that's at the end because of the 2 here. Now, if that was a 3, we would multiply the last number by 3. And if that was a 5, we would multiply that last number by 5 to get a target number. So here, it's a 2. We multiply the last number by 2, the 24, I get 48. And let me be sure to put the sign in, it's a negative 48. And that tells me that the two numbers have unlike signs. So to get to positive 13, I'm looking for two numbers with unlike signs, so they subtract to 13. Unlike signs means that you're subtracting and giving it the sign of the higher. The higher one would be positive because the 13 is positive. So I'll set up my sets of parentheses, my FOIL-like sets. I'll put the X's in, but leave a little room because one of those X's is going to get a 2 in front of it. The other one will not. And now I'm going to think of multiples of 48. So let's think of multiples of 48. Well, we could have 48 and 1. We could have 24 and 2. We could have 16 times 3. We could have 12 times 4. And we could have 8 times 6. All of these numbers, sets of numbers, pairs of numbers, they all multiply to 48. But only one of them combines to 13. And I say combines because this time, that negative here tells me the signs were unlike. They're subtracting to 13. Take a look at them. Well, 48 and 1, that, that would subtract to 47. That's not 13. 24 and 2 would subtract to 22. That's not 13. Remember, we're subtracting because the signs were unlike. If the signs were like, this last number would be positive. Then we would be looking for two numbers that add. 16 and 3, they subtract to 13, don't they? So 16 and 3 are my numbers. And so I'll put the 16 here. And I'll put the 3 there. Now, which one gets a positive and which one gets a negative? Well, sign of the higher must have been positive. 16 is higher than 3. So that one gets the positive. These are not my factors yet. I have to do one last step. Because my target was 48 when I multiplied by 2, I now have to divide by 2 to get myself back to the 24. And look at my two numbers. I pick the one that can divide by 2. 3 can't divide by 2, so it has to be 16. 16 divides by 2, and that will give me 8. So I divide the 16 by 2. And uh, I'll leave that there and make a new set of parentheses. It would be x plus 16 divided by 2 is 8. Because the 2 divided in this parentheses, it goes on the opposite parentheses set. 
And so that's 2x minus 3. So let me review that again. I chose the number that can divide by the original 2. That was the 16, because 3 can't divide by 2. 16 divided by 2 is 8, so that one becomes x plus 8. The opposite parenthesis gets the 2 that I divided. It has to go somewhere. It goes in the opposite parenthesis. Remember, I said one of the 2 would need to have a 2x. So that's 2x minus 3. Let's FOIL to check. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times positive 8 is positive 16x. Negative 3x, uh, negative 3 times x is negative 3x. And negative 3 times positive 8, there's my negative 24. My like terms in the middle combine, giving me the 2x squared plus, sign of the higher, 13x minus 24. So that's my original problem. These are the two factors right here. The two factors 2x minus 3 and x plus 8. Remember, there could be a time that you're only asked for one of the factors. And in that case, either one of these would be the right answer. 2x minus 3 and x plus 8. Those are the two factors that come out of uh, 2x squared plus 13x minus 24. When I FOIL them back, I get that trinomial as the result. That's the check. On YouTube, I do have an alternate backdoor method where you could use some logic and intuition to get your answer. But this would be the algebraic way to factor trinomials.